I mean, in the, kind of the mid-90s, did a lot of uh, good things, really protected the football well. Didn't put the ball in harm's way um, really one time throughout the game, which is a, it's kind of the starting point for everything that we do. Not just him, but in, in all cases for any quarterback, but uh, did a really good job of that. Got, I think he ended up with just uh, one less plus play uh, than his minuses, so just, just a little bit short of 100, but really did a nice job. Controlled the game, was in control, was able to scramble and get out of things. So you know, one of his, probably his best grading game he's had. What change did you see in the second half from West Virginia that took away the middle of the field? Uh, really, it was probably us more than anything else. They didn't really change at all. They played the same thing. We just didn't hit those. We, I mean, the four drives in the second half, three of them penalties probably derailed us a little bit. And then uh, um, we had the one turnover on downs after the one penalty, and then we settled for a field goal with two negative plays down there. But no, they didn't. They were still playing the same stuff. They were in their quarters coverage and all that. We called it a little different in the second half. I mean, the situation, you're up 25 to start the second half. Um, the only way they're getting back in that is if we do something to help them. So then we were trying to be smart with it, and we had some opportunities, and we didn't probably we didn't execute as well as we did in the first half. I mean, we put up 234 yards in the first quarter, and I think 247 the rest of the game. So that was a, that's where we got to kind of keep keep it going. Don't look at the scoreboard. Don't focus on that. Focus on just executing our next next drive. Coach, for that first half, I guess what, what did you feel the offensive line did so well to kind of keep Jet clean, just especially after the, the way that. Uh, they had played the week before? Well, we made a big emphasis that, I mean, they're, they're good up front. With what they do schematically, they're going to cause you some issues. Our kids did a really good job. We tried to scale some things back, simplify it for them, to put them in a position that they could go out and execute the game plan and not overburden them or put them in too many tough positions. Uh, um, and they did a great job with it. I mean, we come away with no sacks. Um, I think there were a couple times they got contact on them, but nothing really. Uh, there were no free runners, which was a big deal with how they twisted and line, uh, line stunted and that type of stuff and how they brought their bandit backer kind of through things. They'd gotten other people. I mean, they were getting about 40 yards of negative yards every game prior to us, and then they get seven against us. And, um, but the O-line did a great job of kind of working in their gaps, being patient, understanding where they're going to fit, how their blitz tracks were going to hit so we could kind of stay in front of them that way. And then we tried to do the right things as far as getting the ball out of Jet's hands as quick as he could within his reads but uh, really didn't have to throw hot. Uh, we didn't throw hot once in the game, so everything was kind of just on uh, regular rhythm. You know, we're we going to see Sir Roderick Thompson play on Saturday. Is it all Tays on Henry all the time, or we see a bunch of Jack Gloves? Jack Gloves oh, yeah, we, and not, not one guy could play that position for us, but, uh, I mean, we fully, I mean, fully expected we'll have, I mean, Sir Roderick, will, I mean, I expected he'll be able to get back in at some point this week and be there for us on Saturday and that, and that's just part of the position. Um, I mean, Tay started the year as, as the first guy in, and, and then uh, Ahmad was in there, and now Sir Roderick. So all three of those guys have been really good for us. And the next guy steps up. And Jack got in last week for a few plays, didn't get any carries, but was in protection, did a nice job in protection. And uh, I mean, he can execute what we were going to ask him to execute and do those things. But Tay, I think Tay's ready for the workload and wants to be the, the featured guy. Back to your offensive line for a moment. Considering the Stills brothers had 20 and a half tackles for loss for the season and no tackles behind the line. Saturday, uh, which of your line guys did you think were most responsible for that? Uh, well, Deaton and Wright probably, uh, I mean, Deaton's played really, really good all year. Wright probably had his best game uh, playing, which is a, is a big challenge for that spot, the, the guard position playing on top of especially 56. Um, what he was able to do inside there, because he lined up as a nose, but most of the time he played off of somebody else, and Wright did a really good job there. And then Bruffy continued to play really well on his side and um, that, but uh, probably Deaton and Wright kind of combination of those guys kind of kept those guys clean. And there was at least one time uh, the back made a guy miss two in the hole, so that, was, that helped us in that way. But no, they did a, I mean, and that was a challenge. What we talked about going into the game was win the line of scrimmage. And what we meant by that was don't put ourselves in long yardage situations. And um, the guys up front kind of took it to heart, made a big deal of it. I mean, it wasn't perfect last week during practice, but on a, and it wasn't perfect in the game, but they did it uh, at a high rate and probably higher than anybody else had against them. So that was a real big positive and a big reason why we were in the first half, why everything was clicking the way it was. We're not getting behind the sticks. Back on the quarterbacks for a while, since Matt has now said publicly that Allen wants to redshirt and the plan is to redshirt him, do um, you think that would affect Jets' mentality at all? Just the relax is not the right word, but just know, okay, this is my this is my show for the rest of the season. Let's make the most make the most. Probably, I mean, I think probably that's natural, but I think really probably over the last three games, he's been a, it's kind of the way it's felt being around him, the way I think he's kind of approached it is it's my team. 
I'm, I'm running the show. It's, it's my guys. I'm going to talk to him. I mean, he's went out of his way to kind of be the, the, the vocal guy on the offense. You see him. Uh, you guys would see him more like on the sidelines, doing between drives. He's working up and down the sideline, going to talk to the line, talking to the receivers, and that's part of being a quarterback. But I think he's kind of taking that mantle. This is my, this is my offense. This is my team. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead them where we got to go. And it's been, it's been tremendous. And I think the kids have rallied with him and understand that he's gonna, he's gonna get us there. And the way he's playing is putting us in a position we have an opportunity to, to win these games. So it's been really positive. But definitely, I mean, I don't think. I'm sure in the back of his mind he was like, well, when Allen gets back, what's going to go on and everything. And we kind of knew this was a possibility from the get-go. So I don't know if he was overly stressed about it, but I think it probably just solidifies it that, hey, this is my group of guys. i got to go win these games. What does the depth chart kind of look like right now with those guys? And uh, I mean, Jets won. And then, uh, I mean, Jackson right now would be the, the first guy in. And we're starting to work Maverick into some – to getting reps and everything because he hasn't really taken a rep since the – what, second, first scrimmage of, of tour days. Um, I sat in all the meetings and all that, but that's a, a lot different. Today was his real first of like people running around him, calling plays, him having to execute it. And you could see there was some rust we were breaking off of it. And some of the other guys were kind of giving him the business because the ball wasn't quite as aggressive with the throws and what he can do. Uh, he's still thinking a little bit. So we'll see how he kind of progresses to see if he can get himself in a position where he can compete or be the be the next guy up because he was kind of trending that way doing two a days, but and then broke the broke the bone in the foot, so that's kind of been put on hold. So we'll see kind of where he can get to. I don't know if it'll be this week or next week, but we're kind of continuing to progress it. Is what it a different? Is a different kind of approach with him because he hasn't really the last couple of years, you know, with injuries and stuff, he hasn't really played live that much besides scrimmages in a while. How do you kind of approach with a guy like that, a guy young coming in there and battling some injuries? Uh, well, really, I, I kind of throw them in and let's let's go and, and let let's not think about that. Let's not focus on that part. It's focus on you playing the position at a high level, getting the ball out of your hands, reading things, making decisions, and that. And we'll see if he's ready to kind of do that in the limelight, or is it just practice reps at this time? So, but this is really good to get him back working now. And even if he doesn't get a rep in a game between now and the end of the season, what that does, getting him advanced for spring and as we move forward, is really good with the kind of the developmental scrimmages we do on Thursday and the reps we get for the three quarterback during out the week. I mean, he's going to be able to get some reps to put under his belt so he can kind of add to it. And, and depending on, and he really picked it up quickly in two a day. So let's see if he can kind of continue that and put some pressure and maybe we can get him some snaps on a, on a game day. What do you see from situation? TCU's defense? Uh, TCU is, I mean, they're really, really sound. They've always been that way. Coach Patterson does a great job. I mean, they're four down. They've been really, um, I mean, I think they've been riddled the last couple of years by injuries. And I mean, you see it as, as we watch video, it's, you watch one game and you're like, hey, there's number such and such, such and such, such and such. And then you watch the next game and you're like, where'd those guys go? Um, so I think they've been having to deal with that. So they've probably, probably tried to make it a little simpler on their guys than they have. I mean, it's a, but they're four down. They're consistently four down. We haven't seen that in a while from a, from a team. Um, so it changes up the quarterbacks for a little bit as far as our reads and our run game. He's always going to have probably a, a line of scrimmage read as opposed to just a kind of a backer or a stack read is in our reference. So that does it. But they've been really good at, again, it's the explosive plays deal. They've, they've given up a few at times. But, um, I mean, we broke down the whole season on them, and their explosive runs, I think, was at 27 for nine games. So that's three a game, which we're averaging more than three a game. So they're doing a great job at kind of stopping the run. Um, looking at the third downs, they've only had 17 third and one to twos on the season through nine games. So that's less than two a game. I mean, and they're in the 30s with third and 11 pluses. So what they're doing is they're getting people behind the sticks, their tackles for losses and all those things because they do a, a tremendous job of penetrating and their guys knowing what they do and putting themselves in position. So, no, this is a good challenge. Um, they're not uh, some of these some of these defenses where they're doing 800 different things from different angles, but they're really, really good at what they do and how they do it. And it's kind of a, and we try to pride ourselves on being really good at what we do in that way. So it's kind of a execution type between the two of us. But and we out execute against them. With this TCU defense, it's even more important now to not get behind the sticks and to execute while it's important every week. It's specifically important so you don't get in those bad situations. Oh, yeah. It's very similar to going into the West Virginia game last week. I mean, they'd gotten Baylor in six of those, six of the third and 11 pluses in the game. So, we were, I mean, that was a concerted effort not to do it because our third down percentage goes way down when you're in third and 11 plus. So, um, as it's important every week, but 
this, and, and then we've got to continue to get better on third down. We've just been okay and kind of toward the bottom of the Big 12 on third down. So trying to keep ourselves out of that and getting first downs on first down and getting first and second downs to convert into first downs has been critical. But that'll be, again, this week is executing on first and second downs so you don't put yourself in those bad third down situations because that's when they can tee off, and that's when you get a lot of stuff from them. They have a lot of, a lot of variation, a lot of stuff they do on third downs to kind of take shots at you. In terms of finding an in-game situation to work Maverick in in the past, in the last couple games, whose call is that, and what do you all base that? Oh, I'd be. I mean, it'd be. What's the situation of the game is? I mean, if it's a, it's. A, are you in a lead situation? Or are you um, in a position where the the game's kind of in controlled? And that way we can get a guy in, or is it need based that he needs to go in and play for us to help us win a football game? And that'll kind of depend on how practice goes. I mean, uh, Coach Wells makes the ultimate decision. I mean, he'll he'd ask me my opinion, I'm sure, and then he'll, but he'll make the uh, call if we need to put him in or if we're going to put him in in that thing. And we'd love to get him some reps, but um, I'm excited about getting him the practice reps because I've done this long enough that every rep he gets in practice is just moving him forward and the, the future of him as a quarterback and that and game reps are they're good and you like to get those at some point and you like to get that first one out of the way because normally the first one's not their best one they're ever going to have so um, we kind of would like to get that done but that's not a that's not a priority really just getting him back for practice right now has been a, a huge plus for us.